Hello, my name is Kate Crowley. I'm on the faculty in the Program of Communication Sciences and Disorders at Teachers College, Columbia University. I've created these video modules with my co-author, Georgia Duan. Welcome to Module 5 of Differential Diagnosis and Preschool Evaluations, a case study. In this module, we are going to continue looking at the child's receptive language using excerpts of the auditory comprehension subtest from the PLS-5 in Spanish and English. It is not appropriate to provide scores on standardized tests when those tests lack validity or reliability or when they have significant racial or cultural biases. Moreover, evaluation materials cannot be used that fail to distinguish disability from lack of adequate instruction in reading or math or from limited English proficiency. This, of course, is the law as contained in the Federal Law on Special Education, IDEA 2004. In this case, standardized tests failed Alex in that he scored too high on the language and articulation test that the prior evaluation evaluators administered. But standardized tests can be used to probe for information about a child's language skills. In this case, we used several of the items on the PLS-5 to see how much Alex could understand. The visuals for a number of the items in the PLS-5 are good, brightly colored and engaging for children, and several of the individual items can be used to probe for various language skills. We start with Spanish receptive language. It is a español. Español. Sí, español. ¿Quién habla español? ¿Tu papi? Yeah. ¿Daddy habla español? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. ¿Tu daddy habla español? Yeah. ¿Tu mami habla español? Yeah. ¿Tu abuela? Yeah. Sí. ¿Tu hablas español? Yeah. ¿Tú también? Yeah. Sí. Ok. ¿Quieres ver el libro en español? Es puro español. ¿Quieres verlo? Yeah. Ok. <laughs> Ahora empezamos. Enséñame la cuchara. ¿Dónde está la cuchara? Enséñame. ¿Aquí o acá? La cuchara. ¿Dónde está la cuchara? Es la bola, la pelota. ¿Qué es eso? Un spoon. A spoon. <laughs> Muy bien. Enséñame. El pájaro. ¿Dónde está el, la galleta? Uh -huh. ¿Y dónde está el pájaro? <ríe> Ahora, enséñame la manzana. Manzana, muy bien. Ahora, enséñame el gato. Uh -huh. ¿Dónde está el gato? Muy bien. Wow, tú tienes mucho. Y enseña, ¿dónde está el tenis? El tenis. Uh -huh. ¿Y dónde está el gato? Eso es muy bien. Gato. Quiero ver otra vez, se me olvidó algo. ¿Dónde está el pájaro? ¿Sí? Muy bien. ¿Y dónde está la galleta? Ajá. ¿Es eso right? galleta? En es, y si us, usan no, galleta. No, no, cookie. El cookie. cookie. El cookie. <risa> Vamos a ver, ¿dónde está el cookie? Eso es. <risa> oh, perdón. Ay, ay, ay. Ok. Enséñame el bebé que está durmiendo. Durmiendo. Muy bien. Y voy a ver dónde estamos, porque de verdad yo no sé. Un momentito. <risa> El galleta manzana, el vaso, ay, ay, ay. Bueno, yo voy a ponerlo acá. ¿Dónde está el niño comiendo? Comiendo. Ajá. Ajá. ¿Dónde está el niño jugando? Que está jugando, jugando. Que juega. Muy bien. Él está comiendo. ¿O jugando? Están. Tiren, muy bien. Enséñeme al niño que está bañándose. Muy bien. Enséñeme al niño que está corriendo. Que corre, corre, corre. Muy bien. Muy bien. Ah, 
Ah, ahora, ¿listo? Enséñame. El televisión, el TV. Mm. Enséñame el bicicleta, la bicicleta. ¿Bicicleta? ¿Bicicleta? Yeah. Ok. Enséñame el zapato. Zapato. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Ay, no, ¿qué pasó? Bicicleta. Yeah, pero ¿qué pasó? It broke. It broke. Ah, oh, ¿qué pa pero qué pasó? ¿Por qué está roto? ¿Por qué? Es a bicicleta. Ah. ¿Y qué hace el niño en la silla? ¿Qué hace? A bookshop. A bookshop. Yeah. Muy bien. Ah, enséñame, está lloviendo afuera. Enséñame, está lloviendo. Yeah. ¿Dónde está lloviendo? La lluvia. Muy bien. Sí, entiende mucho en espa español. Bastante. Enséñame. Espérame, montita. Wait, wait, wait. La niña está comiendo, comiendo la manzana. La niña está comiendo, durmiendo, está durmiendo, ¿no? Sí. ¿Dónde está comiendo? ¿Qué come ella? ¿Qué come? De ir a De ir. You are good. Muy bien. ¿Y qué hace acá? Ah, ¿Tú juegas fútbol? ¿Tú? Sí. ¿Con tu papi? ¿Con daddy? Sí. Hmm. Enséñame el boni. Ajá. Enséñame el pato. ¿Qué, cómo, ¿Qué dice el pato? ¿Cómo hace el pato? Es un site. Yeah. El pato hace cuac cuac o el pato hace guau guau. El pato hace guau guau. Oh, qué chistoso. <risa> Let's see. ¿Dónde están los ojos? Mm. ¿Dónde está la nariz? Ajá. ¿Dónde está el pie? Ajá. ¿Dónde está la boca? <risa> ¿De la escuela o de la abuela? La abuelita. <risa> ok. Oh, enséñame los bebés que están llorando. ¿Sí? ¿Hay más? ¿Hay más? ¿Cuáles están llorando? ¿Uno? ¿Sí? ¿Qué más? ¿Está llorando? Yeah. ¿Él? ¿Está llorando? Yeah. ¿Está triste? Yeah. Enséñeme los bebés tristes, que están tristes. Sí. Tristes, muy tristes, sí. ¡Oh, oh, oh, oh! 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 ¡Oh,
We write our observations with examples in a paragraph on Spanish in the receptive language section of the language assessment. Receptive language skills Spanish. His receptive language Spanish skills are significantly less strong because they are now less supported in his current linguistic environment. He could understand some simple words such as manzana, apple, lluvia, rain, and gato, cat, but not bicycle, shoe, or bird in Spanish. Additionally, we see that he knows show me the girl who is eating with prompting, but not show me the girl who is playing. He also sort of knows the baby is crying, but he can't identify all the babies are crying. When we ask him, what are they eating? He says, they are eating apples. He also knows receptively eyes, nose, mouth, and foot, which he learned from practice with his grandma. His grandmother is one of his primary caregivers, less so now that he is in preschool. So when the Spanish is more contextualized, he can probably understand it. What I learned about his overall receptive language is that his English language skills are significantly stronger than his Spanish skills. Alex, as you recall, is in an all-English preschool with all-English speech therapy, and his mom said that she was told by one of the SLPs that she should only use English with Alex because both languages will confuse him. Of course, the research does not support this SLP's advice. Sometimes, during the receptive language assessment, we can gather data about the child's expressive language skills. Alex says soft tricycle, which is difficult to understand, and we may not deduce that he is describing a bicycle with a tire that's dented and flat. He tells us there is a book soft to indicate a book on a soft chair. That was interesting to me, not necessarily in a Spanish sense, but in the sense that I'm gathering more data on his expressive skills, even during this receptive language section. In terms of language acquisition, I'm learning more about the child's current and historical language acquisitional history. Alex probably had much more Spanish proficiency when he started speech therapy in English seven months before this evaluation. We see that Alex has lost a good deal of his Spanish skills in the last seven months as he learns English. It's important to note that in preschoolers, the strength of a language varies greatly based on input and can fluctuate quickly. We'll include this, of course, in the language background and use section that we described earlier with the background information on what kind of language this boy is exposed to and how. Language background and use. While Alex's mother is interested in him acquiring Spanish, she tends to speak only English with him unless her mom is in the room. Alex's maternal grandmother is from Bogota, Colombia. She has taken care of Alex all day since he was four months old and uses Spanish virtually all the time she has wished with him. Alex's first word was agua. More recently, Alex's daily exposure has increased. His school is monolingual English and he is there now five half days a week. The SLP that Alex has been seeing since March 2014 is a monolingual English speaker because, his mother indicated, it is difficult to find a bilingual SLP. Now we'll look at his receptive language in English. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. You ready? Okay, so you're going to have to get up for this. I would like you to get me Thomas the Train and bring him over here. Remember the one I showed you? Could you get me Thomas the train and bring him over here? Very nice. Now what I'd like you to do, now what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take Thomas the train and put him on a chair by the dining room table. I'm checking you. Go ahead. I'm watching. Now, listen again. I want you to take Thomas the train and put him on a chair by the dining room table. All right, that'll work. Now, I'd like you to take Thomas the train and put him through the basketball hoop. Can you take Thomas the tank 
and hide him under the little chair. Wow! Now I'd like you to take Thomas the train. Come here. This is a little surprise. Take Thomas the train. Give him to Mommy. Give Mommy a kiss. <laughs> you are great. Yes. You are doing so well. Okay, come back over here. Wow, Mom, he really is doing great with this. All right, now let's see. What else am I going to... Oh, I have a few questions for you. Yeah, was Interesting. Doing great. Yeah, we got that going on. Yeah, we got that going on. I don't know what else to do with you. You know everything. Oh, I, and we did that already in Spanish. I'm sure you can do it in English, right? Let's see. Can you show me the little girl who is playing... And show me the girl who is sleeping. Very nice. And show me the girl who is eating. Oh my goodness, you're so good at this stuff. Oh, hold on, let me get back here. Now show me what it looks like when it's raining outside. Oh. Yep. Yeah. How'd you get so smart? Good. Yeah, you're doing just great. You're doing so good. Um, oh, this is a tough one. This is kind of an interesting one. You want to have a, one that's really kind of fun? Yeah. All right. Ready? Show me what we use to drink water. Mm-hmm. Show me what we use to cut our food. Do you get to cut your food with a knife? No. Who does your cutting? Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> And let me ask you, what do you use to eat your cereal? Yeah? I don't know what I... Oh, I know what I want to do. Give me that Thomas the Tank, will you please? Thomas the Train. This is my last one from here. I don't have to use any of these. Good. All right. Now, I want to see if you can do this of things for me. So, let me see. What do I need? <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I take this over here and just bring it right here? Is that okay with you? Sorry. All right. Okay. So, I want you to take Thomas the train, and I want you to put... Is this a bridge? Yeah. yeah okay. I want you to put Thomas under the bridge. He likes being in there, I think. Now I'd like you to take Thomas and put him on top of the bridge. On top. Very nice. Wow. And now I'd like you to take Thomas and put him next to the bridge. Whew. Terrific. Next we'll look at Alex's English receptive language skills. I started using his favorite toy, Thomas the Train, to give one and two step directions such as hide Thomas the Train under the little chair and take Thomas the Train over to Mommy and give her a kiss. From sections of the PLS5 English, we see that he understands functional uses of objects like using a cup to drink water and cutting food with a knife. We see that he is more relaxed and easily identifies objects in the pictures. This is probably due to the fact that his English skills are stronger and also because he is more at ease with me at this point halfway through the evaluation. He could show the girl who was eating and the girl who was playing without hesitation, which he had difficulty with in Spanish. Here we continue to learn that on the day of the evaluation, his receptive skills in English are significantly stronger than his receptive skills in Spanish. His spatial relationships with prepositions were at least age appropriate as he placed Thomas the Train under, on top of, and next to the bridge. We're really impressed by how expertly and confidently he behaved during this assessment task. We have now gotten a pretty good sense that Alex's receptive skills are age appropriate based on the language probes we used, including several items from the PLS 5 in Spanish and English, his comprehension of questions, knowledge of functional and spatial relations, 
ability to follow one and two step directions, and vocabulary. Once we know that comprehension in one language is age appropriate, we know that the child does not have a disorder in a receptive language. We continue to confirm that his English receptive skills are stronger than Spanish, but that is now less interesting to us, and we know his English comprehension is age appropriate. More and more, intelligibility is starting to come to the fore as something that gets in the way of this child's communication. We'll return to expressive language in the next module as we investigate his narrative skills.